Hello, welcome to La Excellence. Our first issue is IPCC's sixth assessment report. IPCC, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, it has recently submitted sixth assessment report. The name of the report is Climate Change 2021 Physical Science Basis. This is the name of the report and this report has mentioned that warming of the ocean is leading to rise in the sea levels which in turn is leading to frequent and severe coastal flooding in the low level areas the so warming of the seas warming of the seas they also lead to severe and intense cyclones for example recently we have observed intense cyclones in the arabian sea in general arabian sea cyclones are less intense and less frequent but the frequency and intensity is increasing. One of the reasons can be global warming and climate change. And monsoon and extremes, monsoon extremes, that means rain, sudden rainfall in a particular region in, in very short period of time during the monsoon season or deficiency of rainfall. These are going to be very common in the next few years. Rise in the extreme events, fall in the snow cover in the Hindu Kush Himalayan region, these are some of the points mentioned in the report. We have to go through this in detail. This report is important. What are the general observations? What are India's specific observations? These needs to be read under this particular report. Next issue is UNSC meeting or UNSC session on maritime security. Recently, India chaired United Nations Security Council meeting. So we are a president for this particular month. In this context, uh, we conducted a session on maritime security and India has adopted presidential statement on maritime security and it said that this under UNCLOS, United Nations Convention on Law of Seas, legal framework is already there. That legal framework must be adhered to. Every country should adhere to the provisions of this. So he, this is an indirect reference to China. China in South China Sea region, it is claiming the sovereign right in the large part of this particular South China Sea. In this context, under UNCLOS, it is said that there is a court called Permanent Court of Arbitration. Under UNCLOS, this PCA has said that China has no exclusive right. But still, China is claiming large part of area which it calls as 9 dash region, 9 dash line region under its, under its own territory. But other countries like Philippines, Brunei, Malaysia, these are contesting. In this context, in this presidential statement, India has reaffirmed maritime security. And it also mentioned that India has Sagar strategy, security and growth for all in the region. This is the strategy that we adopted in 2015. Under this, we want to provide regional maritime security in the Indian Ocean region. Now, with Indo-Pacific as the strategy, India's role is enhancing. In this context, maintaining maritime security, adhering to the international law is utmost important. Next issue is government's clarification on Pegasus. Recently, our defense ministry has said that there is no transaction with NSO Group Technologies. NSO Group is the defense software company that has prepared, the, that, that has produce this particular software Pegasus. This is a malware Pegasus spyware. Israeli company that this developed this Pegasus software. Ministry of Defense said that India, that is Indian government did not have any transaction with that particular company. That means Indian government is not the one who has provided, uh, who has went for the surveillance on the individuals. If the allegations are proven, if Indian government is not the client, then who might have ordered for the spying on the individuals whose names have been mentioned in the recent uh, report. This is going to be a very big issue now. So this needs to be addressed and Ministry of Defense and Government should conduct a thorough study on this particular issue. Next one is government is delaying the recommendations of collegium. Central government, judiciary has said that, Supreme Court has said that, center is delaying the uh, recommendations of collegium. What do we mean by collegium? Collegium means group of judges, CJI, plus four most senior, four senior most Supreme Court judges. They form a group which is known as collegium. 
these collegium members they recommend the names to president of india on appointments and transfers of the judges in this context the final decision is taken by the government because president acts acts under the aid and advice of the uh, aid and advice of the council of ministers in this context supreme court has said that this collegium which is there for judicial appointments and transfers it is recommending the names but then government is delaying in the appointments it is causing delays in the judgments especially there are some high stake commercial issues these are getting delayed that's a that's a problem judiciary delaying the issues is a problem this needs to be addressed next issue is self sufficiency in edible oil production recently national mission on edible oil and oil palm this mission was proposed this proposal is to reduce the import dependence as of now we are importing 60 percentage of edible and oil palm we want to reduce it by 20 45% 20, we want to produce the domestic oil production and we we want to reach this target by 2024 and 25 so in the next few years there would be 55% growth in the oil seed production as per the projections under this particular proposed mission earlier we have this mission known as national mission on oil seeds and oil palm this mission was merged with national food security mission now again government is bringing a new mission which is to deal with the edible oil and oil palm see we have to observe this these are all for same purpose duplication needs to be addressed umbrella programs needs to be there duplication needs to be addressed next issue is india australia relationship recently australia's commercial envoy he has criticized that he has criticized china saying that china is using trade as a weapon we call it as trade weapon trade as a strategic weapon that means if china stops the imports or exports suddenly the economies are going to be impacted now australia and china they had good trade relations now retaliatory tariffs are there australian exports are banned or boycotted by china that's why australia said that it it is using trade as a strategic weapon in this context democratic countries are tilting towards india democratic countries are tilting away from china towards india and india should accept it india should be ready to play a greater role in this context so we have to read comprehensively about india australia relations in the news article the major issue is on trade that's why we are reading this next let us understand the editorials china and india border dispute recently gogra this is the place where disengagement has happened earlier pangongso region in near the pangongso region disengagement happened now in gogra region disengagement is happening in june 2020 violent clashes has happened we know that in this context both countries have proposed for maintaining a buffer zone buffer zone that means for few kilometers region no country either china or india should should go for patrolling so that kind of buffer model is proposed which will work in the short term but in a long term this is not going to have a peace in the border so that's why there needs a political solution there are many border protocols but which are not adhered to this is the example for that border protocols are not adhered to that's why conflict has happened now long term solution need to be searched for political solution is the only way forward next issue is saudi arabia and iran relationship we know that in the west asian region saudi arabia and iran these are major rivalries main rivalries in this context instability in this region gulf region is going to cause harm not just to that region to the entire world how this region is a hub for petrochemicals crude oil natural gas etc in this context this conflict in the persian gulf region this might impact the uh, maritime maritime routes that will lead to that will have negative impacts on all other countries countries now in this context why saudi arabia and iran why they have the conflict at the initial place this is nothing but power struggle who should be more powerful who is the regional power 
so that turned into a sectarian conflict saudi arabia majorly is dominated by sunni sunni sect sunni muslim sect iran is majorly dominated by shia sect in this context conflicts many times conflicts were there between the two countries now slowly the geopolitics in the gulf region are changing how there are accords known as abraham accords abraham accords means these are the accords that are made between israel and other gulf countries so in this context usa is being the mediator and many countries they are reconciling with israel in this context slowly the power of saudi arabia has a regional dominance regional dominant country is reducing gcc gulf cooperation council it has become dysfunctional o- overall the power of saudi arabia is reducing and in this context recently there are there are news reports which said that saudi and iran reconciliation might happen is this good yes this is good especially for countries like india this is good now we are trying to balance the relationship between iran and saudi arabia so if these two can come together so we and other countries they also develop we also can have benefit over it because this leads to stability in the littoral states persian gulf states it leads to freedom of navigation it leads to safety of sea lanes so this is this can be considered as a win win situation for those countries and other regional countries next issue is labor law reforms government has passed four labor codes overall 44 labor laws at the central level these were consolidated and prepared as four labor codes one is code on wages second one is industrial relationship code 2020 third one is occupational safety health and working conditions code finally code on social security there are four codes and the concerns of labor laws include there were lack of proper consultation with all the stakeholders and from supreme court there's a directive saying that migrant data base should be prepared under this there is a proposal but until they gone supreme court asks nothing is moving and on the other side government is unable to implement these codes government has passed it in the last year itself but it's still not implemented because there's huge criticism that's why in this context these four labor laws they need modifications wherever necessary because especially code on wages yes it's universal it's applicable to everyone but it also has certain issues with regard to disposable income with the wage, wage earners in this context these labor reforms needs to be revised once again next issue is misinformation and feminism online in the online social norms we have social norms physical world has social norms these social norms they get amplified in the online world in this context women face aggressive and offensive trolling this trolling it undermines and it discredits them professionally personally it it increases the shame factor this makes them to be silent to be silent to not to express their opinion in the social media this kind of misinformation and gender specific targeting needs to be addressed next issue is west bengal's cm and related issues we have article 164 this article talks about appointment of chief minister under this particular article article 164 any person who is even if even the person is not a member of the legislative assembly he or she can be appointed as cm but they should get elected to the legislative assembly or legislative council within 6 months of appointing as a chief minister so in this context west bengal mamata banerjee lost west bengal mamata banerjee lost and within 6 months if assembly polls are not conducted she is going to lose her post as chief minister this is going to cause instability so in this context going from uh, assembly polls because there are vacancies so by polls is the way forward final issue is plastic pact plastic pact model means all the stakeholders from the producers to users they should agree on certain basic rules already many countries including uk south africa australia they are implementing plastic pacts now in india cii along with world wildlife fund india they both are bringing together 
plastic packed rules that means there are certain rules known, uh, known as extended producer responsibility epr that means producer after producing plastic they have to take the responsibility producer has to take the responsibility in proper disposal so from end to end responsibility and cycle needs to be there we have a term called circular economy model that means from raw material to intermediary goods to finished goods to final consumption and then it has to be processed so waste should be minimized it should not be linear it should be circular that model is known as circular economic model plastic packs try to bring in plus circular economic model these are the articles thank you very much all the very best